Hello, Zach the Ripper, this man with the missing teeth that were lost June 28, 1998, uh, the day that I walked into Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a mere man and walked away, a legend, is the hardcore legend Mick Foley, WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley, and from one wrestler to another, Zach the Ripper, I want to congratulate you on your 1,500 subscriber on your YouTube channel, that's awesome, man. Keep up the great work and many, many more. And to any of you watching this who are not yet subscribing, what's wrong with you? Have a nice day. Welcome back, everybody. Professional wrestler, comic book collector, video game enthusiast, Zach the Ripper Comics here. And as you can see by this giant box right in front of your screens, it is New Comic Day, and this week is a huge week as this week's comic books have arrived in a diamond box. And if any of you are not familiar with diamond distributors, they have monopolized the comic book industry and are basically the only distributor left for all of the different comic book publishers. So when diamond does not get their books out or if they're damaged in the mail like my Donatello was last week, unfortunately, what are you gonna do? So let's open this bad boy up and let's see what's in here. Ooh, there's some good stuff. Check this one out. This is a... Uh... <laughs> Look at that bad boy. That looks like a 9698 maybe. Yeah. That's a 98. Should we slab it? Nope. Let's pound it. It's good stuff. And as a reminder, every Wednesday is New Comic Book Day at all your local comic book shops, all of your digital online retailers. <laughs> and these are in no particular order, and first up this week is going to be IDW's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Jenica, Volume 2, Number 2. Uh. Really cool cover there. Jenica quickly becoming a fan favorite amongst Turtle readers, way different from the Venus de Milo character from the 1997 live action show. This is a female Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle done correctly. Now, as you guys know, I tend to pick up a lot of independent comic books, and this next publisher, AWA Upshot, put out something that I could not resist. It had a higher price point, but it is a thicker book, a graphic novel size, and this is from AWA Upshot. This is the COVID Chronicles, and this features stories from across the world that took place during this year's COVID-19 outbreak in the hospitals and everything from the people that have lived it, both of, that had COVID-19 and as well as those that fought on the front lines. True Stories from the Front Lines of COVID-19 has a foreword by Alyssa Milano. And the artwork's really good. It, it just... This was something that goes to support a really good cause, and I recommend everybody to pick up this book. This is going to be a piece of history. I don't care if it's worth nothing a year from now. It's always going to be worth something to me as far as the sentimental value because this year has been hellacious. I have lost people. Some of the closest people in my life have lost people. Something like this is going to be looked back upon years and years, decades from now as a piece of our history. And another book from AWA Upshot that I wanted to get in on, this is issue one of five of a book called Erratic. It's doing extremely well in the secondary markets and you'll probably see why just from the cover. Obviously, incredibly inspired by Spider-Man. I mean, it's basically you see Spider-Man and a little bit of Nightcrawler mixed in there. The character is nothing like a Spider-Man. Uh. 
So I think people are buying this up thinking that it's going to get pulled at some point off the shelves for looking a lot like Spider-Man. The poses are very McFarlane-esque, but as I said with the COVID-19 Chronicles, AWA Upshot puts out some really, really solid independent books, and I'm looking forward to their rendition of a superhero with Erratic. Switching over to DC Comics, we go to Batman The Adventures Continue. Again, these books continued the Batman animated series from the 1990s that went off the air in 97, 98. This is issue number seven, cover A. Really cool cover. And what I think is the better of the two covers, this is cover B, same issue, features the Bat family. You have Batman, Batgirl, Nightwing, and Robin. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that Batman The Adventures continue, does continue, and that they eventually move Batman Beyond into that book. Continuing the Batman books with DC, we have Batman issue 104. Couldn't turn this cover down. The stories have been amazing since James Tynion took over. And this has some awesome fallout from the Joker War. You see Harley Quinn, Clown Hunter, potentially taking a swing at either Batman or Harley, and then Batman doing some detective work. That's one of the things that I've enjoyed most from this James Tynion run is that they brought the detective work back to Batman. Can't go wrong with that. Now, as I said, James Tynion took over for Tom King on the Batman books after Tom King's run was cut short during the Batman Catwoman storyline. But DC's Black Label, the mature portion of DC Comics, has brought Tom King back onto Batman to tell his story the way he intended it with Batman Catwoman issue number one. Gorgeous cover here. Like this is some fantastic artwork. The Bat and the Cat, you can't go wrong with the two of them. That's cover A. And you guys know me when it comes to Batman and Catwoman. If it's the Bat and the Cat, I'm getting more than one copy. This is gonna be cover B. Really awesome winter snowstorm cover there with the bat and the cat. And for those of you that are interested, there are rumors that the bat and the cat may get a little frisky in that book. And now we're going to switch over to Marvel Comics as the remainder of the books tie in to the King and Black storyline that I've been touting for a month now. If you're able to get to your local comic book shops, if you're able to go to Zack the Ripper Comics on eBay and find anything that has not sold yet relating to the King and Black, please do so as the King and Black is going to dictate the direction of the Marvel Universe, be it through animation and the MCU in the next five to ten years. First up is a tie-in to King and Black, a side story. This is the Union number one spinning out of Excalibur for Queen and Country. Cool synopsis to this book. I recommend it. As a reminder, if you're getting any value out of this video or being entertained in any way whatsoever, please let me know in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We are over 1,700 subscribers and I cannot thank you enough back to the books. Next up is one of the most badass covers we have here today. This is the Marvel Tales Null one shot, issue number one, with a, just an awesome, awesome artwork of Null. This features Venom number three, Venom number four, Web of Venom, Carnage Born number one, and Venom number 25, all tying into this issue, all having to do with Null, who is the god of the symbiotes. So if you've never read any of this, but you know who Spider-Man is and who Venom is and who Carnage is, where they come from the symbiotes, this is the god of where those symbiotes come from. And then we go to the actual series itself, King and Black, issue number one. This is one of the variant covers featuring a barrage of Marvel Universe. You see Null up top, Venom, Captain America, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Jean Grey, and Wolverine. This is another issue number one variant cover, again featuring the entire Marvel Universe. You have Null, Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, Captain America, Venom, Cyclops, Spider-Man, Wolverine. Really nice cover there. Now that book was originally a secret variant, and the reason it's a secret variant is because they released this, which to the blind eye is the exact same book but when you do them side by side you can see 
that one of them has the Hulk and one of them has the Thing. So very cool to get two copies of that. We're still rocking and rolling with the King in Black. Again, still issue number one, another variant cover. Tell me if this doesn't suit your fancy. Really nice white cover with a real badass tattoo. The symbiote symbol, null sword going through Venom skull. That is some really, really cool artwork. Now, I am not at all a fan of Black Widow. However, when Marvel announced that they were releasing their nullified covers, where they would have a normal cover of whatever the book is, and they would nullify it. So they'd put the character of Null, the symbiote, within that cover. I had to pick this up. This is the Black Widow issue number four variant nullified cover where you can see Black Widow has been overtaken with a symbiote looking only as she can look. Really nice. And along the same path as that, this one is going to be a Daredevil nullified cover. This cover is already going for astronomical amounts online, upwards of $50 or more. It just released today with a $3.99 price point. This is Daredevil number, tw number 25, excuse me, the nullified satanic daredevil and not only are people digging the cover this book has the first appearance of Electra as daredevil so if you can find this if you can get a hold of daredevil number 25 the nullified variant do that now you may see this pop up on Zack the Ripper comics eBay store here shortly and last but not least from this huge comic book week is my cover of the week Going back to the King in Black, number one, this is just an incredibly, incredibly gorgeous cover. This reminds me of like some mid-90s Japanese anime. Cannot go wrong. Like this is a really badass looking null. Look at that. That is really sweet. That's the show, folks. I want to thank everybody for checking out this video. Leave a comment below on what you picked up this week or what you thought of what I picked up. If there's anything I'm missing that you think Zack the Ripper comics should be reading, let me know in the comments below. Thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. You have been supporting this channel, and I cannot thank you enough. For those of you that do not know about it, feel free to hit up patreon.com slash Zack the Ripper comics. You can pledge to a tier. It's basically a digital tip jar for the channel and you get free merchandise in return. T-shirts, hoodies, backpacks, fanny packs, all kinds of things. And if you'd like to just buy those items outright, go to teesprings.com slash Zach the Ripper Comics, our official merchandise store. The links to all of these are in the description below where you can buy Zach the Ripper Comics merchandise. Just in the past week alone, we have done some record sales on there and I cannot thank you guys enough for doing that with the holiday season upon us with Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and Christmas fastly approaching, I recommend checking out that store because there's all kinds of things, both for men, women, and even your pets. Thank you for everybody liking us on Facebook, finding us on Instagram, hitting up the eBay store for all of those comic book needs. As you know, this is the month of the dollar sales, where every single book, every single listing on there having to do with comic books starts with an auction price of just 99 cents. Last but not least, hit that thumbs up, hit the bell for notifications so you know when we go live or post new videos like this, and please subscribe to the channel as it goes a long, long way. Until next time. I'm... That took that place, took place during, during this fast, this fast, this fast, this fast,